Hello, it's time for another POV drive. Yay. Uh, this time, we're in royalty. We'll be in a crash if I don't get out of this lay-by properly. There we go. Um, yeah, we're in royalty. As you can probably tell by the minging headlining, this is Betty. Um, Betty is stuck at some traffic lights and I'm going to get done off the lights by Nissan Leaf. There he goes. Yeah, so this will be a um, POV drive. I'm basically going to strap a camera to my head and act like a pound shop version of regular car reviews. And uh, this is a relatively special car um, because this is a 2001 Ford Fairmont AU, uh, which is a fairly famous 2001 Ford Fairmont AU. In fact, I went on Wikipedia the other day, and if you look up Ford Fairmonts on Wikipedia, or Falcons or whatever they're down as, uh, this one is mentioned. You know what Hubnut is. If you don't, just watch the videos, you know. If you want a history lesson on the Fairmont or the Falcon or the AU or whatever, watch one of his videos. I, I you know, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Something to do with Ford Australia and new edge styling and stuff. I've been working on the car um, for a little while. Uh, considering I've had the car about probably nearly a month, I haven't done a lot on it because we've been waiting for parts most of that time, but I've fitted the parts and now I'm out test driving it to make sure all is well. So this drive will be predominantly what's it like to drive well, what's it like to drive Betty? So if you're a, a hub nut super fan um, and you've got pictures of Ian on your wall or in your wallet and you message him frequently and ask him if he'd like to meet you, then you're gonna love this because I'll tell you what it's like to be in here. Um, this is where Ian sits. Ooh. But if you're just interested in what it's like to drive uh, a Fairmont or a Falcon or an a, you know, the AU, um, yeah. We'll see what it's about. I'm going to take it on the route, the one that I take all the Citroens I've driven on. Um, and uh, did I take the TVR on it? No, I, I hadn't devised the route that early. So, but I will continue to drive cars on that route. Um, and then we'll stop uh, along the way and have a look round the Fairmont AU in a non hub nut way. So you can look at it in other ways. What a good time. Now it's late in the day, so the sun may be a little low in the sky and I will apologize for that, but unfortunately I cannot change the solar system. So, I'm not super fans. I'm living your dream. Ooh, Betty, excuse the shorts, it's very hot. Although it's not hot in here. I'll tell you why in a minute. So automatic box. Steering wheel from a tanker. Away we go. I'll get it out of the way. This is quite a cool thing. It's quite a cool thing that this car is here. Uh, for those who don't know, and I imagine that is very few of you, uh, Betty is the car that um, Ian, who is Hubnut, um, bought when he went on a bit of a voyage of discovery around New Zealand a little while ago, probably a couple of years ago now. Um, and when he was over there, he bought an Australian car. This has been done to death. Everyone knows this. He's in New Zealand. He buys a Falcon. He could have bought, you know, a Toyota, a Corolla or anything, really. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we have I was telling me my seatbelt wasn't done up then, but it is it's odd. Um, yeah, a lot of the stuff that we have over here is over there, but he didn't want that. Rightly so. He wanted to live the experience and he had to buy an Australian vehicle. So this is an Australian vehicle. Uh, it's built by Ford of Australia. It's nothing to do with Ford of Europe. In fact, I don't think there are any parts on it, except perhaps the radio. That does look quite, yeah, quite familiar. Um, I don't think there are any parts on it that, uh, that are shared with its European counterparts. So that's something. So because it's an Australian spec vehicle, uh, it is right-hand drive because New Zealand and Australia drive on the left-hand side of the road, which is the same as us. This is the roundabout that caught the CX out. Oh, this is sharper than a CX. A CX with no power steering, I should say. Uh, but yeah, because this is an import, it's got a kilometre an hour speedo, so I'm doing my best to 
remember what's what. I think 50 is about 30 mile an hour and 60 is about 40 mile an hour ish and uh, 80. I mean, it's not bizarre for me to drive it now because I'm going to level with you. Uh, I've been driving this car as my daily driver for about two weeks. Now, admittedly, I don't do many miles or kilometers, um, but yeah, Ian's got my C6, so I've not had a car uh, and I've been using this. Uh, which has actually been kind of cool because it means I get a real feel for the car analysis of what it's like and what it's about and there are bits of it that I noticed when I first started driving it and there are bits of it that I noticed subsequently as time went on so it's pretty much as you can imagine to drive if I'm honest you're imagining that it's kind of big which it is and kind of basic which it is and it's got a big thirsty engine which it has and the steering isn't really it doesn't feel like it's directly connected to the front wheels it feels like it's going through a series of pulleys with bits of string around them so it does it does do something but it's it's not a lot when you drive some cars with direct steering when you're at the dead ahead position you feel like you're kind of honed in on it you're locked in on it and then if you move the steering wheel a little bit even not necessarily if the gearing's quick but you feel like the car is eager to do whatever you tell it to do this doesn't feel like that um, this feels like the steering is a means of changing the position of the vehicle you are traveling if you want to travel in a different direction turn it um, you know it's not going to offer you any more than that that's not necessarily the end of the world. Um, this is the second time I've done one of these and seen one of those Hyundai things. And he's speeding. So driving one of these on British roads isn't a problem at all, actually. Well, certainly not around where I live. Parallel parking it is actually a bit of a challenge. Horrible bump. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, I think it might be the big overhang at the back. It's, it's not easy. I mean, you can judge where the back of the car is to an extent because you've got a big spoiler. Uh, in the rear window there uh, on the rear view mirror um, but that doesn't tell you where the back of the car is because this car has the mother of all tow bars on the back of it which today I drove into a bathtub so there you have it true story I reversed this car into a bathtub this is uh, yeah cruising out on the countryside in England yeah it's kind of it, it doesn't feel too big because everyone's got an SUV these days so it's not really that I mean it is a big car but it's not if you went back to the 90s this would be outrageous in this country but yeah it's uh, it's a big car it reminds me the car it reminds me of the most is the bug eye ford scorpio and that's based on memory of what they're like because i've not been in one of them for a long time um, the interior kind of feels similar i think this kind of switch gear is similar i could be wrong but it's kind of got that feel to it do you know this car's done well, nearly 200,000 miles, 313,000 kilometers. So it's nearly done 200,000 miles. I know some of the plastic is, it's scratchy and cheap feeling, although this is all, it does feel cheap, but it's soft all the way over here and all the way down there. And I know it is, right? There's, there's not many rattles. There really aren't many rattles. It, it all seems to work, mostly. Yeah, occasionally you can hear some little trim creaks and things but it's really not that bad it's it's not that badly put together um, the air conditioning is fantastic it's absolutely brilliant uh, it's it's on a par with uh, probably with a Saab I owned a Saab 9.3 that was excellent I'm gonna put the lights on here just so you can see the dials look it's a pleasure to be in it in this weather, I'll tell you that, because it's probably about 27 degrees at the moment out there. Oh, what's this? Car spot in time, Morgan. So the back suspension is a live axle um, with a few sort of link rods. And it, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It rides like that as well. It's pretty jittery. It's not a particularly smooth car. It's it, quite fidgety. It's quite choppy. The front suspension's double wishbone. And the front's not bad. I actually think the front isn't bad at all. And, and I hear from watching 
pub nut videos and the like that um, the higher spec AUs had an independent back end and I'd be interested to drive one of those because if, if they're anything like the Scorpio is over here uh, which they're probably not because that's a, I think it was a semi trailing arrangement and completely different but they were quite smooth and if the double wish but if the independent um, sorry Hell's Angels are going by if the uh, independent back end on one of these is like that then it'll be quite a pleasant car to drive but this particular one is actually quite a basic trim and it's yeah it's quite do you know what it's like it's like driving an old 4x4 like a jeep cherokee or something like that but without being high up and we had a jeep grand cherokee at work once as a tow vehicle and it's really similar to that in the way that it delivers the power that was a four litre straight six this is a four litre straight six uh, that had a solid back end on it this has got a solid back end on it that was completely disconnected this is completely disconnected so yeah going back to the ride it's yeah it's not amazing i mean it's it's kind of one of those things where it, it, it it's not as smooth as it looks like it should be it's the first thing i ever thought about a 60s mustang when i drove one of those you think well it should be quite boaty and quite smooth well this is a long hill which you're having to give it a bit of half throttle to pick up yeah it's not as smooth as you think it would be but what it is smooth at is that engine because this is the most basic engine they do in, in these as far as i believe this is the intec overhead gam four litre i think it's 200 and something horsepower just over 200 horsepower and about 250 260 stats coming up now and yeah it's just creamy smooth and it's just i've never driven a car which is so easy to get going just pulling away normally it's like you can't feel the engine it just moves you the gearbox is a little clunky from first to second but the rest of them are quite smooth and in fact to be fair when the transmission oil warms up it's pretty smooth all the way through there's a crest down there which catches catches out citrons let's see what uh, this makes of it yeah it did a better job of that than the citrons do to be fair um yeah it's quite a lusty pull away very very smooth very grunty feels a bit unstoppable if i'm honest and that i think is probably one of the reasons this car endeared itself enough to ian that he felt he had to get it back because he he spent a long time in this car driving around new zealand and he's not a native of new zealand and and you know by his own admission he's a little bit fly by the seat of his pants and he probably at times didn't even know where he was sleeping that night and the thing that this car was to him when he was over there it wasn't just a mode of transport this was his safe space at times this was all he had you know if the weather goes cold we get in the car if it gets too hot you get in the car put the aircon on if it's raining you get in the car if you need to go somewhere you get in the car if you need to sleep and you're absolutely screwed and you can't find anywhere to do it sleep in the car this this was his safe space this was his his base for that trip and, and at a point where certainly if i did it i'd be feeling quite vulnerable you know you're in a foreign land and you don't really know much about what's going on and i get it and this car gives also gives this feeling of toughness like we don't necessarily get that in this country it's also very hard to keep at the speed limit it feels like it's very unpretentious it's it's the and it's not the car for britain because it's beige in color we don't seem to do that um it's tough and it's a workmate you know it's it's dependable it feels mechanically strong yeah it's not something to park on your, your driveway and try and impress your neighbors with if you're into that sort of thing and if you are i pity you it's it's not that at all it's the opposite of wow that was a suicidal pigeon um oh look at an old rover i don't think that had moved since the last time i come down no it doesn't look like it has moved hey we don't need an mot anymore so yeah just, just leave it there uh, something just pulling away there 
Oh, that was a smooth gear change. Yeah, the fluid's warmed up now. That's, that's a decent gear change. Mind you, I'm not used to smooth gear changes, so. Do you remember those adverts years ago? I think they were Foster's adverts on telly where it was like they were taking a mickey out of people who were being a bit mincy and prissy about things and they were like people were ringing into a radio show and I think they were just giving oh wow 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 look at that that's uh that's an eight what's an eight oh I think it's a Bentley car spotting see we're not far from Goodwood so a lot of posh people around here yeah there was adverts on I think it's Foster's and they were like no nonsense type thing and they were giving people advice on the radio yeah, I can't remember if that was it, but that's kind of what this car is. It's just, you know, it finds your fancy cocktail with the umbrella and everything in it, and it just knocks it over and puts a pint there. That's this car. I don't mind it. I, I've actually, because I've been using it, I found it has some endearing qualities to it, which I... Uh, yeah, I've been enjoying it. It does feel very honest. The brakes are, see the brakes are weird. The brakes feel quite wooden. They don't inspire a lot of confidence, but then when you push through the servo bit, they're not like over servoed modern brakes. When you push through the servo bit, you get a, like a, a firm pedal and then it actually becomes quite feelsome. I mean, you couldn't, I don't know if you'd be able to feel what the wheels were doing through it, but it, it, it becomes quite firm and then it is just about how hard you push it. I know that sounds really stupid to say, but a lot of cars these days, you, you, you don't really modulate the, the brakes in the way that you would do on an old non-servo car. It is very basic underneath. Rear wheel drive, live rear axle so if that wheel there at the back goes over a bump that one reacts to it as well even if there was no bump and the whole car shakes brilliant i think they prefer towing in australia with the live rear axle now the economy has not been fantastic that is perhaps not a surprise uh, i don't know how many miles per gallon it's been doing because it's in different units we're on the twisties here and it's it's no sports car, but then it isn't supposed to be a sports car. And that's what I'm saying about the steering. It doesn't matter that it's not full of feel. I mean, it would matter if you lived, I don't know, somewhere like Wales, where you've got all these twisty roads. But for 99% for of driving, you don't need steering that is really communicative. Just like everyone moans about cheap plastics in the interior. How often do you drive down the road doing that? Oh, those vents don't feel very sturdy. You don't. The only things you touch are the steering wheel, the stalks, the gear shift, the handbrake, and one or two switches every now and then. And that's it. So why does the quality of the interior plastics matter so much? A bit of a rattle there, but... I can't do my crest test. Although, to be fair, every time I've come over this recently, not this one, the one after it, um, it's got quite violent so I, I I don't think it's good in any car now. Ooh, no, it wouldn't be. But yeah, it's uh, it's a nice driving position. It's not too bad. The, the wheel is big. Um, the seat is soft. He's got these seat covers on the front here. I've taken the rear ones off. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, he keeps complaining that he gets static shocks every time he gets out of the car. Pretty sure it's these seat covers. Indicators on the right, wipers on the left, obviously, because it's actually how they're supposed to be on a uh, oh wow he's got like six steering wheels or three steering axles yeah it's how it's meant to be on a right hand drive car makes a lot of sense i've got used to it now and i quite like it give it a square oh yeah it's not very responsive to the downshift now it wasn't kicked down the engine sounds quite nice at low revs just sounds like a standard six straight six to be fair and the tailpipe sound is quite nice now because i've played with it the sound at higher revs is a bit strained and whiny on the whole it's actually a perfectly decent car and i can see why he well why he liked it so much in new zealand it's not a car that you would import over to the uk i don't think because it's so special and oh i need to have one of those over here because 
there are cars that, I mean, you could just buy a Scorpio if you could find one and you could put up with the looks. Can't, I mean, the looks of this aren't amazing, are they? Um, it's not as bad as a Scorpio, I admit, but yeah, it's uh, a Scorpio is probably slightly softer and more comfy than one of these. But I think it's an interesting car. The other funny thing is that oh, when I started driving this car every day, when I realized I'm gonna have to use this thing for a couple of weeks, I thought, oh God, what if someone sees me? Because Ian has super fans. I bet my phone rings. Right, so we have my phone ringing and de demonetizing my video. Anyway, yeah, so pretend I just drove in here and I was saying something interesting. I don't remember what it was, but uh, yay, look, we just pulled up. Handbrake on, world's longest handbrake travel. Let's have a look round Betty. It makes a lot of bonging noises. Um, yeah, so uh, what's it like? Well, you've got a number of things in here. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got air vents. You've got a button here to lock the doors. Um, when you unlock the car on the key fob, with this one, it only unlocks the driver's door. You have to do it twice to unlock the other doors, which is annoying. Um, this, the button here, uh, it's supposed to do the aerial, but it actually does nothing. That's not a button, that's just a badge. It's kind of like gel. Um, that is the traction control button, which, I mean, it does turn it on and off, but it makes no difference at all. And unlike Ian, I have not spun this car off a, off a, uh, a dual carriageway into a ditch. I know, he, he was killed. He wasn't. Uh, yeah, to be honest, it hasn't even felt close to doing it. Um, it's quite a delayed kind of reaction to the throttle. So, but then I'm used to much more snappy cars. Um, that's the uh, heated rear window, I imagine. Big basic buttons there. A stereo, which I've never even turned on. Wipers. He does lots of things with wipers. I've, yeah, I mean, that's like flip wipe, intermittent one, two, I think. And then there's a, yeah, variable intermittent there. Uh, lights. No, lights are up here. Headlights and uh, side lights or parking lights. Delay, I don't know what that means. Um, I thought that might be a delay on like, well, originally I thought it might be guiding me home headlights. So it might be like you put it on delay and then you've got your headlights on. And then when you pull up to your house, you do that and you walk away and they stay lit for 30 seconds or something. But it doesn't seem to work like that. I don't know what this does either. I think it's supposed to make the dash brighter or oh, what's, what is going on there you've got cruise control here which i've never used no cruise control there radio there mirrors which i've never used because they're actually spot on uh for me oh look objects in mirror are closer than they appear what if they're not you've got a button here well you've got two buttons you've got one for the boot release like that and then this one for the fuel flap, which is on the other side of the car and makes a proper... It's a ba -dung. So yeah, you got that. And then there's a button down here for the rear fog light, which I've hid. And in here are fuses and relays and things. And it gets complicated. Ask me how I know. But yeah, what a thing. The grill missing down there, I don't know why. But it's just this weird look. I mean, I actually quite like the back end. I quite like the way that, that line comes down and then and then that line there picks up and goes all the way across the top and down again. I think that's all right. There's the fuel flap, look. And then the, it's just like the, the flap there is, is directly to the tank. It doesn't even go into the bodywork. And trying to fill this thing up for a car that uses so much fuel, it's very reluctant to take it. Diamond cut wheels with gear badges. It's not a gear. Cloudy headlights. Let's have a look at the uh, power plant, which is on the right-hand side because it is conceived as a right-hand drive car. Not many cars are, are they? Lifters. Four litre. Intech. Oh, I was going to do something about that. I put this on here, this strap, and said that's a temporary thing just to get you an MOT, see if you can get a battery strap from Australia. And he said, yeah, 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 but this is hub nut, so he didn't. 
I think it's got variable intake runners. Yeah, it's got a vacuum operated diaphragm here. So basically when you don't have a lot of throttle on, there'll be a restriction in this manifold. Um, ow, that's hot. Uh, which actually improves um, low end torque, restricting the intake. Uh, but when you want power and high revs, you need to open that up. And so this will open as the revs build. So it gives you low end grunt and high end revs. It says EEC5 there, which you'd think well, that's something to do with the um, ECU system, but that's the air filter. So go figure. Straight six, this is the forerunner to the Barra, um, which I know nothing about. Also, it's flying ant day and I'm getting pouted. Now the back is interesting because it's locked. Let's try that again. The back is interesting. It does also normally have a seat cover in here, but I've removed it. I hope you can see this. It's low sun. It's, it's a really weird place to sit. The doors do clunk quite nicely. The headlining is disgusting by Ian's own admission. Yeah, it's a funny place to sit, and I'll tell you for why. Um, I'm not Rob Bryden. Yeah, no, I'll tell you why. It's an odd place, because the seat base is quite short, which is quite a Ford thing. Mondeos are like that. They've got quite a short seat base. It tricks you into thinking you've got loads of leg room, when in reality, you haven't. It's just your, your seat isn't <laughs> as far forward. But this one's really tipped back. It's quite soft. And it, it reclines you quite in quite a relaxing way. So despite the fact the seat looks fairly basic, I think it's actually not too bad. And there's a decent amount of room. I'm short, so headroom isn't an issue for me normally anyway, but it's absolutely fine. Quite a big lump in the transmission tunnel there um, because it has an exhaust and prop shafts and all sorts. But yeah, you've got your own vents, air conditioning, electric windows. Do you know, the funny thing about this car is that the other day I had to use this car to go on a family errand. All five of my family had to, well, four include, um, plus me, uh, had to pile in here to go somewhere because, well, because there was a complication and we would have normally taken the C6, but it wasn't here. And the interesting thing was that my three kids, who are um, 13 times two, and they're not, not 26, there's two 13-year-olds, and, uh, and one a 10 year old sat comfortably across the back seat. And that's a rarity. Don't get that anymore. Because we had lots of trouble when they were kids. We had to buy people carriers because you couldn't find anything that would fit three seats in, three proper kid seats. Because we're not, you know, not neglectful. We're not just gonna stick them in any old car. And, oh, it was all right in my day. We didn't even have a seat belt. Yeah, all right, well, you didn't die. But, you know, doesn't mean someone else isn't gonna. Um, so yeah, we've had to buy like Picassos, S-Max, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the C6 is stupid because it's a massive car and yet it's got two big seats in the back and then a pointless one in the middle. This car actually has enough space. I could sit in the middle. And it's not horrific. I'm in between the seat belts like I should be. And it's got a three point belt. You, you could have genuinely have a family of five in this. And that's, I know that sounds crazy, but Land Rover Discovery, sort of 97, 98 Discovery, Discovery uh, 300 TDI, I think it was. Couldn't do it in that. Not comfortably. C6 can't do it. It's actually quite a rarity to have a back seat as wide as this. I mean, I know it's a big car, but kudos to Ford, because no one does this anymore. Well, I suppose no, nobody still does, because this thing's like old. But yeah, imagine, you know, Hubnut is driving you down the road and you're a super fan, you know. Imagine driving this car wearing a Hubnut t-shirt. Wouldn't that be embarrassing? Yeah, it looked like a little diary update. Um, it's dawned on me that I'm wearing a Hubnut t-shirt. And I'm in Betty. Does Ian have crazed super fans? Because, uh... I'm feeling a bit weird at the moment. The funny thing is no one looks at it. You drive down the road in it, nobody looks.
Doesn't I've not turned a single head. I thought I drive this car, I'm gonna get all the super fans looking at me. And nothing. And it's not a case of oh, they don't watch Hubnut, because there's you know, not everyone does, surprisingly. Um but no, no one looks at the car. No one goes, Oh, what's that? No one even no one cares. No one looks. It doesn't in fact I've only ever actually noticed one person looking at this car. Or well, I thought they were. I pulled up outside the shop to get some food uh, for lunch and a guy got out of a van in front of me and he was gawping and I was sat here feeling quite uncomfortable. Thought, oh God, he's really staring and he's going really slowly. Why? And then I thought, well, maybe he recognises the car. Maybe he's thinking, oh, an AU Fairmont sort of thing. But he was really having a good look until I realised there was a woman uh, walking behind the car um, in a bikini top. I don't think he was looking at Betty at all, unless her name was, uh, was also Betty, coincidentally. But yeah, stickers everywhere. I've had to screw his number plate on today. These are not actually black. I'm embracing my inner hub nut. I've screwed his uh, number plate back on because it kept coming off because since he's had that rust proofing done, it's leaked through the back of the um, boot and it's soaked all the sticky pads that are holding the number plate on. So it's falling off. So I've screwed it on, but I've run out of um, black thingies and I didn't like to put that on that because you'd notice it. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, there she is. Don't walk into that, it hurts. Um, they would normally have two reverse lights. This one only has one on this side. That one's become a fog light, which means you don't have to have a horrible bolted on fog light somewhere else. I... Has that never been there? I swear there was a bit. Looks like there's supposed to be a trim on that. Weird. It's clean, so... Because I cleaned the car earlier on, I took it through a car. Oh! Oh, well, I hope that's not in a car wash somewhere. I'll have to ask him. Hopefully that was already missing. If not, I'm going to have to make him something. But there we go. Betty the Ford Fairmont. YouTube royalty. Go on, admit you're jealous. Really? No? Oh, okay. The, uh, the seat trim is, I mean, I'll tell you what I noticed in the back, actually, before I get back in, is it's all like coming apart and it's really cheap feeling fabric, but it's still comfy. Yeah, boy. Righty ho. Yeah, the visibility is not amazing. It does feel quite American. It does feel like an American car. Definitely not a European one. And it's funny, there's a reason for that. Oh, bird. Move. Idiot bird. Where are I? No, I've hit it. Why did you not? F what? Mate, why did you not? Ugh. I tried to go after the bird. It's just walking along. I'm not entirely sure what it's doing. You know, I didn't actually hear myself hit it. And I think what has actually happened is it can't fly. 
So when I got near it, it didn't take off, and it, I just it just went between the wheels. I just drove over the top of it. Didn't actually touch it because I didn't hear it. It just walked off. It looks like it's in a right strop. I tried to pick it up, but it um it wasn't having that. Well, there you go, Betty. It's potentially a pigeon killer. And that's where the hazards are. Well, I say killer, it's not a killer, it's walked off. Somewhere around here, there's a fox or bird of prey that is looking at Betty going, thank you very much. You just made my life a lot easier. There you go, let's try a kick down test. Wow. That's quite a delayed reaction. Well, I'll tell you what, it gets going all right when you um, when you get moving. I think the low speed pull away is not great, but the higher speed stuff is is actually not bad at all. I can't imagine it's got an amazing naught to sixty time. If I'm honest, I mean it's probably uh, I don't know what it is. We could find out. Let's see what Betty can do. Foot down. Such a slow pull away. There we go. Well, I've just pulled over to see what the scores on the old doors were. Um, 10.6. So the camera battery is uh, running low, as is normal on these things. I really should buy another camera battery. Um, oh, ow. There we go. But really, sprinting to 0 to 60 is not what Betty is about. This is what Betty is about. So what's Betty like at cruising? That's really why Betty has been bought, surely. Um, well, when it was new. Uh, not bad, let's try the cruise. Oh, it appears I don't know how cruise control works in this car. No cruise. There must be a button somewhere. Not that one, that's the boot, don't open that. I don't know, I don't know where the cruise is. Okay, so we're gonna have to do it manually. I'm gonna have to hold the pedal like a pleb. See this lovely swoop of mottled brown plastic contrasting beautifully with the evening sky or something pitch her into a roundabout we don't know which way you're going he's not indicated oh, he's indicated the last minute he's boy racing it around in his honda integra oh you're gonna have the sun in your eyes for this one i'm afraid so it's probably as good a time to wind it up. Um, yeah, it's irrelevant really what I think, isn't it? At the end of the day, Betty is Betty. Betty is a one-off, really. I mean, again, the day, cars are about how they make you feel. What? You, well, if you're into cars, if you're not into cars, then they're boring. But if you're into cars, cars are really about how they make you kind of feel the harmony between man or woman and machine um yeah it's you know betty is it's more than the sum of its parts it's what car it is is irrelevant really as long as it didn't stitch him up he was going to fall for it and i think it's fantastic that he had it brought back all the way over here from new zealand a year later and i'm honored to have played a part in it you know it's, it's a good laugh it's good fun good times um and i and i fully get it and to be fair i've driven around now for I don't know how many miles because it's in kilometers and I don't you know I've not seen another AU Falcon or Fairmont or Fairlane or whatever and I don't think I will I don't know how many of these there are in the country but I'm guessing not many it's not a driver's car I admit no definitely not a driver's car but it doesn't matter it's it's about its cruising ability and okay, it's not very smooth and there is a bit of tyre noise and a bit of wind noise as well because the doors don't seem to shut very tightly. They do clunk quite nicely, but... And it's not particularly fast at sprinting off the line. 
10 and a half seconds for a car with a four litre engine that isn't a big four wheel drive. Sorry, I'm gonna have to put that down. You might not be able to see. Interestingly, the sun visor in this car is curved to shape, same as the roof, and is very robustly put together. So well done Ford of Australia. Oh, I've forgotten to do a test. There is a test I'm gonna start doing on cars from now on. The test I'm gonna start doing uh, isn't one I can do on the move. That lay-by would have been perfect, but I saw it too late. Uh, I can't do it on the move and you'll see why. It's something that is deep uh, within my heart, actually. It's a, an area of cars which I feel very strongly about. The SM, in this particular respect, is at the top of the tree. It is peak. And I don't mean peak like kids say these days, because believe it or not, peak, if you're a youth, means bad. I mean, how backwards is that? Peak literally means the, the highest point, the best. Peak. How can peak be bad? How can they go, well, oh, that's so peak, meaning that's rubbish? I mean, what? That's like going, oh, that's so rubbish, meaning it's good. It's backwards. Honestly, youth, they can just, they can get in the sea. Cars have parking brakes. And idiots pull the handbrake up, yank it up without pushing the button in. Push the button in, it's smooth and quiet. But some people don't, they just leave the button out and just yank it up, like Neanderthals. Well, I think manufacturers can do more to deal with that. The BX is a car I also own and love and is the peak worst, peak worst and then invented a new one, is the worst for this. It's very ratchety and horrible when the handbrake comes up, yet the SM is precision. It is silent. It doesn't have a ratchet. It just has a friction grip, a friction lock, which is fantastic. What does Betty have, the Ford Fairmont? How horrible is the handbrake in Betty? I'm going to find out, and I'm going to score it out of 10. No, 9. I'm going to score it out of nine, just to be different. Nine is really good, SM, and one is BX, because BXs are the worst at this. So, ready? Mm. Mm. Okay. Sounds like a plastic ratchet. So that's not as quite as ear grating as it would be in, for example, BX. Mm. Easy to release. Smooth action on the button. You don't have to lift too high. You can just apply a little bit of upward pressure and push the button at the same time and it will release. You don't have to... A lot of clicks to get to the top here. Mm. Where are we at? Where are we at? Doesn't sound good. Sounds like flatulence. I'm gonna go just under midway. I'm gonna go with a four. Four out of nine for the uh, handbrake of hell. No, I'm not, that's too much like triangular doom. The handbrake test, four out of nine. Yeah, could do better. It's not awful. Not awful by any stretch. I've felt much worse, but it doesn't have a nice metal button in the end. That would be nice. There we go. But you shouldn't do it like that anyway. You should do that. So the test should be irrelevant. But four out of nine. I have to go back and retrospectively score the other cars that I've already driven uh, with the handbrake test. Um, the XM, of course, doesn't have a handbrake has a parking brake. I'll try not to run over this girl. Uh, yeah, anyway, the parking brake um, is a foot-operated parking brake on the XM, so I will still score it, and I will add them onto the score for Betty, so we'll see where Betty places in the handbrake test table of uh, parkingness. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up this point of view drive. It's been thoroughly useless to you. Um, yeah look at ian's channel like subscribe do all that thank you to all the members the up and downers the official uh, channel members who um 
support this channel on here, um, you can click join on the main page and if that's something you like the sound of, or if you don't like the sound of it, then that's fine too. Just by watching this, you are doing me a favour. Why is that saying please slow? Oh, let's go Kia or Chevrolet or Hyundai or something has broken down. So yeah, um, so yeah, there we go. That is Betty cruising along, enjoying life. See you in the next one.